Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to give you a gentle introduction to matrices and linear systems. And in particular, we're going to learn how you can write a linear system involving a matrix and you produce what's known as an augmented matrix. So let me share my screen with you and we can get down to business. Okay, so where are we going? Well, we're going to learn a new way to analyze systems of linear equations or so-called linear systems. And the idea involves the concept of a matrix. Now, in previous videos, I did a whole, well, maybe five videos on um, linear systems. And we, we looked at how to solve some of these linear systems. It turns out that the solution procedure can be simplified if you involve this idea of a matrix. So let's look at this a little bit more. Now, matrices, we don't know what they are yet, but matrices give us a framework which we can write linear systems in very simple terms. And we know from previous videos that linear systems are awesome because they arise in so many applications. And I've listed a few there. All right, so why are matrices awesome then? Well, we're going to use matrices to solve linear systems. So, the applications of linear systems are, are kept. And the other reason is that they take complicated equations and they simplify them. And that's a common theme in mathematics. You want to take something complicated or complex and you want to simplify it. And matrices is one way of doing that with uh, linear, uh, systems of linear equations. All right, so now don't don't get too um, shocked by the notation here. I'll do some simple examples in a minute. What we're going to do is use a matrix to compactly write the following linear system. So this, this looks like, like a whole jumble of stuff. But here, x1, x2, etc. are the unknowns. The coefficients, the a11, a21, etc., they're just numbers. And the B1, B2, etc., are just numbers, right? Now we're going to write this linear system as what's known as an augmented matrix. Okay. Now we don't know what a matrix is yet, but but just just bear with me. Now, what's happened here? Well, you've got these big brackets. You've got basically the coefficients of all the unknowns written in columns and rows, and you've got the right-hand side sitting out on the edge, and you've got this vertical line between them, okay? Now, let me just give you a basic example. Suppose I have the following linear system. I've got uh, 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 6. And I've got uh, negative x1 plus 4x2 equals 1. Okay, now we, you can solve that using basic high school methods, but if we wanted to write this as an augmented matrix, how would we do it? Well, you take the coefficients of the unknowns and you essentially write them as rows and columns. So this is 2 and negative 1, so that would be your first column. Then you've got positive 3 and positive 4. Then you get to the right-hand side, so you put this vertical line in, sort of in place for the equal sign, I guess. And you write 6, 1 as a column. Okay? Now, that was pretty easy. What does it suggest? It suggests that the coefficients in the right-hand side uh, what's driving the analysis here. Not, not necessarily the unknowns, the X1s and the X2s, etc. That's what we want to find, but 
To do that, we analyze the coefficients and the right-hand side through a matrix. Okay, so this is an example of a matrix, an augmented matrix. You can see it's sort of like a rectangular block of numbers. It's got two rows, which are horizontal, and it's got three columns that are vertical. So first row, second row, first column, first col uh, second column, third column. Okay. Now, you can also write this linear system as a vector equation. Okay, well, what do I mean by that? Well, you can take these coefficients from down here. You can see all of these coefficients are multiplying just by x1. You can factor out the x1 and write it as a as a vector, and then you can move on to the x2 and you can add them all up. Okay, so if I was doing this with my previous example, it would be something like this. Okay, all right, so for that linear system there, I can write it as this vector equation. And you can also write the system as a matrix equation, okay? So basically here, so you, you've, you, you've pretty much separated your augmented matrix now and you've written the unknowns as a vector. And it, it's understood that if you say, if you multiply this row with this column, you get, this left-hand side, and it's equal to the first entry. If you multiply this row with this column, you get this second left-hand side, and it's equal to B2, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so for our example that we're working with, the matrix form or the matrix equation form would be The following. Okay, so 2 times x1 plus 3 times x2 equals 6, negative 1 times x1 plus 4 times x2 equals 1. Okay, so that's three ways of writing a linear system, firstly via an augmented matrix, via a vector equation, and via a, uh, a matrix equation. Now you may look at those and you might say, well, hang on, Chris, how has that simplified things? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you introduce a little bit of notation here, so this boldface A sub J is the columns, the columns of the coefficients. This is just a, the vector of our unknowns. B is just the right-hand side, and A, big A is this matrix here. Then now you get your simplification. Let me show you. It's pretty good, right? Your augmented matrix, this big mess here, can be written just like this. Okay? The vector form can be written just like this, where x1 and x2 are the unknowns, a1, a2 are the, um, the vectors here. And you can, your matrix form of the equation, uh, where is it? Uh, this matrix equation here can be compacted down to this. Okay? All right, so big deal. Well, look at this equation for a second. This is a basic, basic equation, and it sort of is a generalization of what we see in basic high school maths. So consider the equation 2x equals 8. Now there's no matrices there, but compare that with that. You've got, here you've got a number, here you've got a matrix, here you've got a number, here you've got a vector. Here x is just a number, here x is a vector. So this is a generaliz generalization of this, all right? 
Okay, so what do I mean when I, in, in the first dot point where we talk about rows and subscripts in the last point? Well, let, let's talk about that. The ith row is denoted by R sub i. So if I was to, for example, show you a, let's see if I can find it. Ah, an augmented matrix. Here it is. Rows go horizontally. So this is the first row, R1. This is the second row, R2. Okay. All right. So that's basically, this is a special case with the rows of that. All right. So rows go horizontally. And lastly, if we want to talk about a specific element or entry in, a, in your rectangular block, your matrix, we use the subscript I sub J for the ith row and the jth column of a matrix. So let's look here. You put rows first and then columns. So if, uh, uh, yep, let's write this out again. Okay. What is, say, um, uh, let's go with um, A sub 1, 2. The first row, the entry in the first row and the second column. First row, second column, it's 3. Okay. What about um, A sub 2, 2. Second row, second row, second column, the intersect there, that would be 4. All right. So rows first in the subscript then columns okay all right so the question is all oh, great we've got an augmented matrix or what now well we are going to perform what's known as row operations on these augmented matrices. Okay, I'll leave that for another video, but the main points of this video is matrices are a rectangular block of numbers. If you start with a linear system, you can write that as an augmented matrix um, uh, just, just uh, using the coefficients and the right-hand side of the problem. You can also write it as a vector equation or a matrix equation. We're going to learn how to analyze these various forms in the next lecture when we look at row operations. If you have any comments, any questions, I'd love to hear them. Put them in the comment section and uh, hope you can join me for the next video on row operations. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.